Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by ExcelLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm going to teach you how to use Excel automation with VBA to construct a new sheet based on data from a Microsoft Access database. We're going to click a button and it's going to go out and it's going to pull in the data from an Access database and create a sheet from it. And using automation, we can control things like background colors, foreground colors, cell widths, all that kind of stuff. So when we're done, our Excel spreadsheet will have a button in it. You can click the button. It's going to go out to access, pull all that information in, and then we'll do things like we'll change the column widths, we'll set the background color, foreground color, all that kind of stuff. Left align the first column. Now, last week, I showed you how to do this from access with the Excel automation video in access, where you can have your access database create an Excel file that you can then send to a customer or an employee or someone who doesn't necessarily have access, but you want to give them the data in Excel and you want to have it formatted and blah, 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 right? Well, today's video basically goes the other way. This is going to be a spreadsheet you can set up or a workbook file you can give to your employees where you've got the access database out on the network, right? And they might not be running access, but this will give them a button they can click on that will then go out to your access database and get the data that they need from the tables and create a new sheet for them. All right, so it's basically the reverse of what we did last week. So if you haven't yet watched this video, I recommend you go watch this. It's a three-part series. It's all free. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. Go watch this. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you're probably an Access user as well, hence the need to get data from Access into Excel. And I also strongly recommend you go watch this video if you've never done any programming in Excel VBA. In this video, I teach you how to turn on the developer tab on your ribbon and all kinds of stuff, the basics that you need to get started with VBA and Excel. It's different from Access. There's a lot of differences between the two. So in this video, I explain those. Go watch both of those videos, then come on back when you're done. All right, so in the Access version of this, we created a folder called Excel Automation. And in here, I've got my Tech Help database, right? And then we created these spreadsheet files from the tech help database, right? We click a button and it creates those sheets. Well, let's go the other way. Let's create an, an Excel sheet, an Excel workbook that'll have a macro in it that'll go to this tech help database and get what we need. So let's start up Excel. We'll go blank workbook. Let's go to our developer tab. And again, I show how to turn this guy on in the other video. It's basically, you got to go to your ribbon and customize it. And let's go and add a button. So we'll go to insert and then under form control, not ActiveX controls, under form controls, pick the button, this guy right there, and then click and drag where you want the button to be. Okay, we're going to give this guy a name. Let's call it import customer data. And then we'll hit new. That'll open up the VBA editor. It's over here. All right. Very similar if you're used to working with access. Okay, now in here is where we're going to put all of our code to import information from our access database. It's going to look a little bit different, but a lot of it's going to look the same. All right, so we're going to start off with some variable declarations. And I already ran through this myself earlier just to make sure it worked because access is something I can program off the top of my head. But Excel, I don't use Excel VBA all the time, so I like to run through it first before I walk you through it. So I'm just going to copy and paste from my notes. All right, here's our variable declarations. We need a DB engine object. We need a DB, which is our access database. We need an RS, which is going to be our record set. Database file and record source are going to be for the file name for the database. And the record source will be like the table or query that we want. Okay, then we need some other objects. We need a worksheet object in Excel. L and R are going to be for counter variables. Okay. Now the database file is going to be our tech help ACC DB file. Now, in Access, you've got current project.path. Well, in Excel, it's a little bit different. It's this workbook.path. Same thing. That just means the folder that your database is in, all right, or the folder that your spreadsheet is in. We haven't saved the spreadsheet file yet. We'll get to that in a minute. But basically, wherever you got this guy, this is the file that contains the database information. All right. Now, record source is going to be the table or the query that you want from that database. So I'm just going to pull all the records in from customer T. If you want different records, you can set up a query. You can limit the query based on the records. You can limit the fields that get pulled in. You might not want all the fields, right? Like sensitive information. 
So you can control that by just creating a query. Now, if you want to bring in the data in the current active sheet, you can use set WS, that's our worksheet object, equals this workbook.active sheet. Now, one of my students, Gary Smith, act, asked if it's possible to have it create a new sheet. Yeah, we could definitely do that. So I'm just going to rem this out. I'll leave that in there for people who want it. But here's the code that you would use if you want to add a new sheet at the end of the list of sheets in the workbook. All right, we're going to dim another variable, sheet name, as a string. I'm going to set the sheet name equal to the record source and then a space and then the date. So for example, the record source is customer T. So your name of your sheet will be customer T and then the date. So you can see what date you imported. You can change it to whatever you want. You want to call it Rick's new sheet, have at it. Okay. If you import something every hour, change it, put the, put the hour in there, whatever you want to do. It's your, they're your Legos. All right. And here's the command that actually adds the sheet, right? It's this workbook.sheets.add. And then it says after colon equals, that means set it after this workbook sheets dot this workbook dot sheets dot count. Excel's, Excel's got weird nomenclature for stuff. You just gotta, I, I have to look it up half the time myself. Like I said, I, I find access a lot more intuitive, but I love Excel too. It's just different. And then this last theme here, this last line, we're setting the name equal to that. That's what you see down in the sheet tab. So Gary, I hope that answers your question. And I should probably be commenting the stuff as we're going here. Let's do, uh, uh, can I set up a uh, uh, declare database? So now we've got the sheet all set. Now we have to get the connection to the database. All right, connection to database. All right, here's what this looks like. Set DB engine equals create object. It's dao.dbengine.120. 120 is the version for access 2010 and later. It's currently 2024. So I'm assuming all of you guys are using access 2010 or later. If you're not, Google this, and I'm sure you'll find there's another different number here that goes in there for older versions, like if you got Access 97. or whatever. It's time to upgrade, folks. But likewise, in the future, if you're watching this five, 10 years in the future, they might have upgraded the database engine at that point. You might just have to change this. Okay, but that's what it is as of today. And then the rest will be familiar to Access users set DB equal to DB engine dot open database instead of uh, the current database, because in Access we say current database, but here we have a pointer to the DB Engine itself, right? Basically, DB Engine is a pointer to Access, then you got a pointer to the database file, then you got a pointer to the record source, which is your table. Okay, that's that's basically how that works. All right, next we set up the column headers. Okay, here's our L value for L equals zero to RS fields dot count minus one. We went through this in the last video, right? There's a a list of fields in the record source and they have a count value but it's zero based okay and then each cell again you got row one and then cell l plus one because this is one based right excel is one based access tables and stuff are zero based so we're just going to loop from zero to the count of all of the fields and set the cell header equal to that name the column header okay and then here is where we're going to import the data. But before we do that, I want to test to make sure what we got so far is working. Let's put our cleanup stuff down on the bottom here. I'm going to copy this. Let's see here. Where's my cleanup stuff? Right there is my cleanup. Let's leave some blanks in here. Okay. Close the record set. Close the database. Set them equal to nothing. Set DB engine equals nothing. And then we'll just message box import complete since we don't have a status window. And that should do it. So this is going to create a new worksheet, open a connection to the database, create the column headers based on the fields in the table, and then close everything up and we'll import the data in the next step. Let's save this. Now navigate to the folder where you've got your tech help database in. Mine's on my desktop, so let me go find it. All right, so my desktop Excel automation folder. Now I'm going to call this my, um, my import from access spreadsheet. But watch what happens when you hit save. You get a message saying, hey, you can't save it in a macro free workbook. What does that mean? Well, XLSX means that this is a macro free spreadsheet. It's the default, but you can't put macros in it. That's a Microsoft safety feature. All right, so let's go back, cancel that. You have to change the save type 
to an XLSM, a macro-enabled workbook. Okay, and this just means if you send it to someone else, they're going to get all kinds of warnings saying, bro, you got a macro, watch out, Meh. Okay, all right, hit save. Okay, so that's good. We can close this. Let's rename that button. Right-click on it and go to Format Control. Or I'm sorry, it's under Edit Text. So there's my access kicking in. I'm so used to right-click format properties, right? But it's different in Excel. You got to go to Edit Text and Import customers it's the it's the little slight differences that get me all right you ready click on it and there we go see it did exactly what we told it to do it went to a new sheet put a new sheet in there gave it that name put in the names of the fields from the table and gave us a message box and there we go Okay, now we have to import the data. We're going to loop through all the records with our record set. We're going to format stuff, set the alignments, uh, resize the columns, and we'll do all of that in tomorrow's video, part two. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Or if you're a member, you can watch it right now because I'm going to record it in just a few minutes. And we will cover all the rest of that stuff with our Excel spreadsheet lesson. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have down below. I do try to read and answer them all as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. If you'd like to see me make more Excel videos, post a comment down below and say, I want more Excel. The vast majority of my videos are from Microsoft Access, the database program, because that's been my forte for the past oh, three decades or so. However, I'm more than happy to make more videos for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, any other topic that gets requests. As you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, so make your voice heard and I'll make more videos for Excel. If you'd like to become a member of my channel, click on the join button below the video. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos. And members of all level get free courses once a month. Gold members can download my tech help spreadsheets and access to my code vault. Platinum members get access to all of my beginner courses and lots more. Now, if you want to learn more, if you're watching this video on YouTube, click on the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube actually does a pretty good job of hiding this thing. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Excel Level 1 course, check it out now. It's over 90 minutes long. It's free, and it covers all the basics of Microsoft Excel. And even if you don't need it, I'm sure you got someone in your office who's always asking you questions about Excel. Forward a copy to them. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel, even supporters. Just email me and let me know that you signed up, and I'll send you your free copy. And on my website, I've got tons more lessons for all levels. You'll find everything from my free beginner lesson to more Excel beginner lessons to Excel expert lessons where we cover VLOOKUP and INDEX and MATCH and you name it. I got tons of stuff on here. And while you're on my website, stop by the Excel forum, post any questions you might have, and join in the conversation. Be sure to follow my blog, and you can find me on Twitter and on YouTube and I'm on Facebook, but I don't like Facebook, so I don't use it that often. That's a whole different story. If you're curious, email me. <laughs> but as always, thanks for learning with ExcelLearningZone.com. I'm Richard Rost. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time.